Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzo Ramosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hello, and welcome back to the Lost Signals. Reviews, film and television. So we are focusing on international films this year because it's really a blind spot of ours. For sure. We haven't covered it as much. Quote, unquote, critics. (laughs) And we we want to get the maximum amount of pretension possible. Mm, So we are reviewing the famous film, which I've never seen prior to this, but and I wish I had prior. Uh. Cinema Paradiso. 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 Although I keep pronouncing it Paradiso, so that's probably my fault. It's the uh, it's a natural thing to yes. do, I think. Cinema Paradiso. Uh, I'm Jonathan E. Manzer, here with Scott Thurla. Excuse me. <laughs> it's Stephen Ramosi. <laughs> How are you? All right, uh, Stephen, would you like to start off with the funny log line? Yeah. Uh, this is, we watched the flames down in Italy. His name is Toto, everybody. <laughs> Yes. We'll get to that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do the plot. Speaking of Toto, we start off with, well, first of all, we start off with a large scroll of the... <laughs> of the many accolades this film had, had earned, yes. True. Uh, we get it. But uh, it it starts off with a older, world-weary, lovelorn director who finds out that his childhood... Father figure slash BFF. Slash mentor, kind of. Yeah, has passed away. And he decides to return to his home. And he muses on what his childhood was like. And we go to a kind of of coming-of-age tale about this young boy growing up uh, in... In a small, like, town. World War I era Italy. I believe it's Sicily is where... Uh, Or, like, near Sicily, yeah. No, I think it is specifically yeah. Sicily. And he, he, he loves movies, and the cinema Paradiso is the local cinema. Uh, the church edits the films to get rid of all the nasty stuff. Uh, and he grows up, he grows older. There's a tragic fire that happens, which burns uh, his Alfredo, uh, who's the gentleman who's his mentor. And... Uh, it's him growing up falling in love, that love disappearing, and him eventually leaving to pursue his dreams of becoming a film director. What I really like about this is they set it up so that it adds a lot of mystery to where the film is going. Why hasn't he returned home? Why hasn't he seen his mother in 30 decades? years or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened to uh, this? Like, why does he have this closeness with. Uh, Alfredo, and what led to it. And so as you're watching the film, sometimes the answer quickly, some of these questions start like uh, linger and then mm. you... They give you like some breadcrumbs here and there yeah. so, to, to some angles, yeah. So it's not only a coming-of-age tale, but it, it's coming of tale with questions to... or answers to questions that you have that, like, uh, that you have to figure out as they go forward. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think that the character arc of Specifically, the ending of this film is magnificent. Uh, there's a they take uh, uh, Alfredo had taken all of the cut scenes of kissing and had spliced it together into a, a one his, big kind of, reel. Yeah, yeah. On top. and they put it to this great orchestral score. It's absolutely like beautiful. I didn't see it coming, mm. uh, and I was very surprised by it. And it, it it teaches him at the end that not only the appreciation of what he had as a child and make him fall in love with movies again. But I think it also is the cathartic, what he needed to get over the woman he lost mm. and for him to recognize that he, he would come to uh, getting over that hurt. Mm. And I think it, it, you, you see a man who was kind of embittered throughout become whole again. Uh, 
And I, I really appreciated that. To a degree, like he finds himself, you might want to say. And yeah, like that was Alfredo's like, you know, final gift to him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I agree. Like I had never seen this film. Even we knew of it, but as you said, we're trying to expand our horizons a bit. And yes, I, I enjoyed it <clears throat> quite a bit throughout. I'm not sure how to score it. Like I, I'm giving it a two at least for sure. So I'll let you guys like maybe talk a bit in in a sec. But yeah, I was quite. Um, it tracked me along through the whole journey. And yes, I do believe um, Toto slash Salvador, I believe is his actual name. I did like following his journey. Basically, the whole movie is a flashback, as you said, like a reminiscence of him. Of his childhood, once he learns of the death of his mentor Alfredo, who sort of got him into movies in the first place, or at least helped him along to love the cinema itself, and yeah, it was very nicely spread out, if you will, like like you said, sort of the mysteries, like questions of his childhood, and as he turned teenager and like a young man, and then why did he leave and so forth, and like what his life is like. So yeah, I I, I thought it was quite strong. I did feel though, like you guys might disagree that it was a little like. <laughs> a bit long it felt a bit long to me in a few places not a lot and not the whole time just here and there so that might be the reason i might dock it just a little bit of a percentage but other than that yeah i thought it was a really well done story very strong arc and i enjoyed it throughout yeah i i i really appreciated the character arc that that they had in this um and you know we'll talk about that again in protagonist for sure but i think that i am going to give this a three in terms of just a plot, uh, because it's a strong story throughout. I thought, you know, you had all the parts there that you needed of like a, uh, a well done story structure. The only thing, the only thing that, and you know, you, you did a really good job on this one of, of kind of explaining this, the important points of the, of the film. Um, you see, uh, Salvatore in three different parts of his life mm. and the three actors that play him do a really good job of expressing what's going on with his character as as you're going through it. Um, I was going to say the only thing that I was even considering docking the plot points for or a point for was um, so this story is kind of told in like little snippets and stories of his childhood kind of, but it's all somewhat chronological and it, it is and, and the, you know there's nothing wrong with doing that there were certain parts of it where i felt like slightly one scene was disconnected from the next mm. a little bit but i don't think that's anywhere near enough for me to dock at a point uh, on in terms of plot i thought it was a really strong and well done movie that did have a really good thread that uh ran throughout and those few little points where i felt a little bit of disconnection, I don't think we're that big of a deal. So I will agree with you that it felt a little bit slow, specifically to me in the teenage years. But I understand why, because for the entire point, to if, work if I'm correct with my interpretation of the last scene, in that it has to sell the romance as being something significant. Sure. And it's a romantic look at that part of his life is probably not the most interesting aspect of him, but. It has to feel like there, there's way like behind a payoff it. And it's not end. just a fly-by-night. It mm. has been a long process of them getting together, them even overcoming distance, and then it just fading with time as it life happens. happens. Yeah, true. Uh, now, this is an interesting point to bring up that I think believe the original ending had them getting together at the very yeah, end. I did not know mm-hmm. that. But I completely, disagree, I completely agree with them taking that out because yeah. by him just getting over it, I think is a much worthier goal. And to another point is that, yes, it's the same character throughout, but since you see the elder spurs through, it's almost as if there's one character going through two mm. complete story arcs. Mm. His youthful sure, story yeah. arc and True. him as an older person coming to grips with how his past, like, uh, and what this current state of his town is like and coming in and learning from that. So, I'm probably going to give it a three. All right. I believe you guys have somewhat convinced me. Like I said, I was never, like, dead set on a two. Just, again, and as you mentioned, Steve, there were small, like, little... If I was going to do that, it would be a nitpick at best. So, yeah, I I do agree that it's stronger than it is, like, than it falters in, you know, a very handful amount of spots, Mm -hmm. or less even. So, yeah, I think I'll end up giving it a three, because I thought it was well done overall. And I do like like, your, um, what you said at the end there, E, like, it's almost like two character arcs, even though they're the same character. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So I thought that was a pretty pretty well done, um, nice little way to uh, meld them together. Yeah, yeah, and and the the splicing of I I, I really liked. So they don't use like cutbacks to the present day Salvatore very much until the very end. Yeah. When they it's do, bookends, yeah. it's yeah. it's like really impactful that you like see his. You know, it, a lot of it's just him like laying on his side like he is right in the beginning of the movie, mm. but um, it really like puts a exclamation point on like whatever scene they they've just done like you know I, I i think overall this is just a really well done movie in terms of um the way that it's structured and i will agree i'm gonna give it a three for that for sure all right. <laughs> okay so themes with scott Alrighty, so i requested this uh one specifically like when we were like debating like or um writing out which ones we're gonna get so you guys might have noticed this but to toto slash avatory like the cinema is his church and like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of juxtapositions. There's even like direct shots. Like, there's more than a couple shots of the Virgin Mary that juxtapose with like a shot of the of the cinema. Mm-hmm. Like, he starts off as an altar boy, but immediately runs. Like, when when mass is over, he runs up to the um to the projectionist where Alfredo is doing it. And so, like, I I, I mean, I noticed that parallel and like that kind of like I thought was not in your face. Like, I was very well well organically and subtly, if not subtly, like nicely placed in there so it's there it's obvious enough but it's not like overpowering but i just noticed that i'm like and i thought it was well done because it shows through his character and then as you follow as the movie unfolds you see more and more moments of it where it's almost as if like um the whole for the whole town like the theater is more important than the church itself as well in a sense and like they like everyone gathers there everyone's like sort of worshiping if you will at the altar of film so i thought that was very very nicely done throughout and yes there's like the coming of age story like and the, the the young YA romance, uh, like sort of whirlwind tale there, mm-hmm. and and his teenage and like I guess when he's like nineteen or twenty or so, it was when he leaves ta- um, his small town. I just but I'm just saying I noticed that and I thought it was really well integrated throughout. It was never over the top, but it was clearly there, and I liked the way it was interspiced throughout. So I think that's the major like cinema sort of like saved his life, if you will, or like mm-hmm. it became his god in a yeah. sense, mm-hmm. and he he found God again at the end in a sense as well. Yeah, I I really like that point, and um, it's really <clears throat> excuse me, it's really interesting how in the beginning when he's a kid, um, cinema, the cinema and the church are completely interconnected, yeah, and then as exactly. it goes on, they become separate things. Uh, like even the priest has the less town. control yeah, over the it. Priest had, at one point, they show a kiss, and he's like, "I won't watch pornography," <laughs> and he's like, "You never really see him again," uh, at least in terms of like in the cinema. Yeah. So, but the cinema also becomes more hedonistic as it goes on. Right, there are, I believe, there's a couple having sex in there. One, there's, uh-huh. there's a yeah, hooker there in there at yep. one point. Bunch of kids, kids jerking off. Kids are jerking off. I knew you were going to mention yeah. that. Yeah, and at the sexy a, in scenes. A, in a way, I don't know if that's him lamenting the lack of uh, it, as the, the age has progressed. Mm. Uh, we be, like anything that you hold sacrosanct becomes corrupted. Or if it's kind of kind that of like loss that, of community, I, I'm not exactly 100 percent sure what, he, uh, what I was going for. Aside from that, it was effective with what this kind of what he was. Hmm. This See, I like that. That's interesting. I don't like. I don't know. I didn't view that as like a. I don't think he portrayed it in a negative way. I think it was just like a different era of uh, the cinema and sort of the march of social I was, progress. Yeah, I was reading about this of. movie a bit before we came on, and he said. Uh, before the film came out, that it was meant to be like an obituary to uh, the, the cinema, the traditional cinema, and an obituary to like uh, traditional movies in general. And then after this uh, did really well, uh, he never mentioned that again. Uh, <laughs> gi- uh, the director's name is Giuseppe uh, Tornatore. And uh, yeah. He was so too successful. I, yeah, I think that's really funny. Like he. Mm. Went, set out to make a movie about the death of film and ended up kind of reviving it. Like, film in, itself. like revitalizing it in Italy and, you know, like to some degree, like worldwide. It, this movie won a ton of awards like all over the damn place. It's it's weird because I really dislike nostalgia, but this is perhaps one of the best love letters to hmm. a, a past to film itself. Yeah. But and, right, like and really well phrased. The best part about that is the entire movie, the, you know, mentor Alfredo hmm. is telling the kid not to be nostalgic don't look back you always have to look forward and like move on and see what's happening next like that was i think his idea when he was when uh, tornatore tornatore was making the movie was like look 
this is this is what was. We need to move on to what's yeah, going but, to be. But also, and then, the scene occurred though <clears throat> that when the mother was going out to see him, dragging along the uh, the yarn, the yeah. line of yarn from mm-hmm. there, saying so like, even though he did leave, that kind of connection right. was always present there. So, yeah, it's kind of like that fight between moving and in the end that the purpose of him getting over something that he was holding on to with the uh, love and moving on from that, but using what he loved in the past yeah, to get out of that. To do so that, it's, yeah. it's really a complex it's a and nuanced to, idea yeah. that mm-hmm. he's presenting. No, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. And yeah, like I'm going to mean themes a very strong one because mm-hmm. of all that, because you can see sort of the main angles that I think I laid out and that you mentioned that, yeah, <laughs> it's odd if you think about it that you mentioned it that like he's using nostalgia to get over nostalgia yeah. in in a sense yeah. and I thought that is a neat idea and it was definitely well integrated so yeah I mean it's I, I... but just like sort of film cinema as a temple almost like I think that was quite clearly there and, and like I said very well done woven throughout the story mm-hmm. of his life oh absolutely uh, yeah I completely agree I, I don't think I have too much more to say on this topic but yeah very strong themes okay well mm-hmm. you have another topic to talk about which is antagonist Antagonist, this is probably the toughest one. Yeah. I don't see there being any real antagonist. In fact, uh, the main antagonist that I see in this film, I guess, is like his, uh, is, is uh, Salvatore or Toto's uh, dislike of his small town. But he doesn't really seem to dislike it all that much. He's got a job that he loves mm-hmm. while he's there, you know, especially in his teenage years. He's got, you know, the love of his life who eventually leaves him, which, like, I guess, sends Sad him away, you know, drives him away. But it doesn't seem like this town has done all that bad by him. But for some reason, and I guess it's just because of his own life, his mentor, Alfredo, is telling him he's got to leave. Like, you've got to go away. Never come back. Don't talk to me ever again. Or I won't, like, let you in my house. Like, all this stuff. And it's – and I get – I get – what the what the film's trying to say but i don't see that small town life as like a very strong antagonist it was a harry and the henderson moment <laughs> yeah, it, it go- yeah. <laughs> because i feel that um alfredo was worried about the complacency with, with someone he cared yeah. about yeah kind of i kind of got that same vibe leave before you fall prey get like stuck to in small here town and in life. your life yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, I pretty much uh, got, gathered that as well or just got that from it and yeah, so then that means I sort of mostly agree that there isn't like, it's not a fault of the film or the story or anything, but mm-hmm. there's no real antagonistic element that I think rises to the degree to give it a one to. No, I agree here. with that. Yeah, that's that's where I'm going to come down but, on Again, that. I don't think it would have been better for having... Yeah, I think it probably right. would have lost something, in fact, if, they, if, that, if the film tried to do that. Yeah, well, I mean... Who knows what they could have written in, but if they try to shoehorn in yeah, something exactly. as an antagonistic, it would have felt more antagonistic in. element. It would have, yeah, it exactly. would have uh, taken away from and it would have suffered. A broader, I, I, I think. Yeah. How about um, old school film uh, reels that caught fire? <laughs> <very> <laughs> the nitrate in the old films yes. is the antagonist, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, if that never happened, he might not have run the yeah, uh, parody. So that was know? an unfortunate accident, but it did inform uh, you know the, the the path that he took through life. Yeah. So mm-hmm. lucky that guy won the lottery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <true. laughs> I forgot about that. So we could uh, buy and revitalize the cinema itself in town. Yeah, right. yeah, I think I'm going with the zero for antagonist for everything uh, we just said. Well. And yeah, I, I think it makes sense to do so here. So Agreed. speaking of ones, though, um, I like Toto in all three stages. Mm. I know you're not a fan of kids, but I thought, yeah, he, he was the finest he was fine. Yeah. Uh, I thought he actually had good comedic timing with Alfredo. I actually mm. think Alfredo was at his best. When he was interacting, like the son he never had, yeah, in that Mm -hmm. part. Uh, Teenage Toto was, I think, the weakest one. See, I probably enjoyed him more, uh, but I mean, like again, a fine character thing. But I, I really love the older director Toto. Especially, he didn't have many lines, but his expressions, either when laying in bed and reflecting on his past, or in the final scene. Where you watch him, like, like sort of go through his... all of these emotions yeah. in, and the the way it, and silent too. He's just watching yeah. the fucking like the, the expressions on his face, and like that, that, it actually moved my cold stone heart. Yeah, actually, we we uh, you mentioned this uh, movie 
precast as you know something that may not have ever come about if it wasn't for this but the end of call me by your name kind of harkens to this so like yeah. you know you you have uh the character just sitting there by the fire going through this whole range of emotion on his face and like the only thing you have to work on is there's no dialogue there's no anything other than this character like mm. sitting and living with this like huge this, moment, yeah. this broad range of like shit that he's going through you know? I, I meant to mention this in themes i'm gonna do right now italian cinema does life affirmation like no <laughs> other uh business whether this movie life is beautiful mm. uh call it by your name i believe it's american director, but it's an italian director mm. like for somehow mm. they have the ability to capture like these small little moments, and They're not as burdened as us Americans, it seems. <laughs> yeah, well, we we gotta impart our cynicism everywhere. Sure, of course. They're like, drink wine, live life. It's amazing. Yeah, no, that's funny, but I mean, I don't, I do agree with it. Like, there's, it's always like a touch of that that you can see, and certainly in this one. So yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna give it a one. Yeah, I'm giving Toto slash Avatar one. Like you said, like I think all three actors who portrayed him in all three um stages of his life. Did a very good job and were uh, very believable. And I believe it was the same character throughout mm-hmm. and, and, and his true. relation to when we get to it, uh, Alfredo as well. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. As you and, mentioned previously. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I was going to say, well, I will talk about it in a minute. But like, you know, is in insofar as him, like you, you definitely believe that Toto, you know, child Toto is the same as like mm-hmm. old Toto. Uh, in the same way, they do a really good job with um, his mother. Mm-hmm. Who we'll talk about in just a minute. Yeah, but I'm giving him a one uh, for Protega for sure. <laughs> just one last thing. Since we talked about the actors for Chell, we did mention previously that the both of the uh, narrative threads that they uh, are the arcs worked really well. So yep. I just yeah. to, for sure. Just, Scott, on to you with uh, secondary. All right. Um, so I guess we have to say Alfredo, of course, is the most important secondary character. I mean, like like you said, he's the mentor for Toto. And he certainly is the the crux slash the catalyst, we'll say, that sort of puts him on this path of of loving cinema and like mm-hmm. learning learning to be projectionist and so forth. Like that was Toto's like sort of like almost annoyingly like uh, uh, interrupting him in the <laughs> projectionist booth all the oh, time. Yeah. Till he finally like you know sort of like acquiesces to like okay, I'll teach you. Like you can come over. And there was very there was one humorous moment, a scene where the children like the middle eight. Toto's like about let's say seven or eight or so. And he's taking like a test in school, and like the older people, like Alfredo being one of them, like come in and like, t- basically like the equivalent test. School, yeah, yeah. So like Alfredo's like help me out. <laughs> like Toto like, like sort of like signs to him that he'll agree to do it if he lets the, lets him go to projectionist. And so he like crumples up the the test and like get, you know ships it to him. So that was a funny moment. And like you can see like them building like a relationship throughout, and like of course becoming like again like a mentor, like sort of big brother, um, apprentice almost. That Toto becomes too, and then when the like an unfortunate fire, like you said, the the film catches fire and during um, a beautiful moment too. Which yes, we had we have to talk about what, that. Yeah, a, an awesome part of the film, yeah. which we we'll get to maybe in style. But yeah. <clears throat> while this is happening, the film catches fire and it burns uh, Alfredo and th- 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 thus blinds him and means he can't be productionist anymore. But luckily, if you will, at that point, Toto has learned enough to take over the job. So yeah, I mean, and I really loved when Alfredo was being like sort of not stern, but like more adult and like trying to impart lessons especially when toto has become a um, teenager slash like young man and just overall like god sorry the blue eyed girls oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and like he's also oh yeah which reminds me that alfredo often gives him like movie quotes because he's seen like every fucking movie of yeah. course so like that was a nice touch but yeah i mean i thought he was a really strong character was comedic when he needed to be but was serious and again mentally when when it called for that and yeah, a really, really great um, sort of dynamic chemistry between them. So, mm. yeah, uh, I know there are others, but I'll let you guys. Speak Alfredo about was great. Uh, I I want to give a I want to talk about his mother, whose name was Maria, in the movie. Mm. Uh, I think that both actresses, both actresses who played her, did was a really good job. Because I thought it was just the same one made to look older. No, it was a lot. Some were, of the other ones. There were but, two. Okay. Um, and the younger one is really like brutal on him in the beginning of the movie she's beating him she does every single time you see her a number of times. she's an italian mother and uh yeah so and then like <laughs> during his teen years she seems like a lot more loving and like you know he didn't get the wooden spoon though he didn't get the spoon <laughs> no i mean not that we saw <laughs> not on screen but i thought that she did a really good job and um i want to mention the his his girlfriend uh elena who 
it was interesting seeing the development of their thing. Like she wasn't on screen all that much, but she was a True. huge presence in the middle of this movie. Yeah. Um, which was really cool. Like she was away a lot or like behind the window, you know, when he was standing there waiting for her. Um, but you felt her as a big part of this movie. And I think it, I think she did a really good job in the, in the moments With that she, she did, had on yeah. screen to make her presence felt and known like as, as to why he was, you know, pining after her. So enamored with her, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll stick with those for now. I, I know you've got a couple, Ian, that... Quirky townsfolk. Yeah. Hey. Actually, I have to Quirky give this movie village. credit for the thread they put through this for all of the uh, townsfolk to grow. Not that they develop much. I, a lot of them are, like, one-dimensional characters. Mm-hmm. Sure. But, but they're still there. And... Like, oh, that guy's appeared again. Hey, I... Uh, like it, it, they really developed a sense of like old friends that you haven't seen in a while mm. reappearing yes. on yes. screen later on. But one of my favorite characters was the priest. He had much more of an impact at the beginning of, mm. uh, and in a way, I think it was brilliant the way they, as his role in the world started like diminishing, yeah. his role in the movie started diminishing yeah. until hey, <laughs> remember me? Oh, I was late. He's barely, yeah, uh, I didn't even get off. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's a nice. I didn't think about that, but it's a very nice parallel. Yeah, but uh, he he was community timing, and although and I really like when uh, Toto comes back, there's a different priest with a different altar boy. Yeah, and like to show just some things change and some things stay the same, uh, but it's not always you know, sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, village idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy who won the lottery and then both the cinema. I mean, every one of these characters is memorable to a certain extent. And I have to give him credit. Like, just random people in the theater. The like, spitter. <laughs> yeah, this just guy who just, he's, uh, he seems wealthier than the rest of the town. So he's on a balcony and just spits down on them until <laughs> they get revenge on him at the end. <laughs> yes. uh, the guy who always falls asleep in the theater. Yeah. And people are putting like, uh, Messing bugs with in his mouth <laughs> and things like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's cool overall. Yeah, it's uh, great. Like, you know, the, these characters are fairly like the characters from the cinema are fairly one dimensional, but they also. I feel like they all have a story mm-hmm. within this film, mm-hmm. even though you don't get to really know it. They all, I feel like they all have a character arc. We just don't get to know what it is. Yeah, I mean, you know? I mean that's e- a really cl- uh, yeah. interesting. Even yeah. even given like the the limited like um dimension they are, like you still like uh, recognize them. You know what right. I mean? Like like you said, like you come back and like oh that guy, hey that guy's still here. You yeah. Know? Like he's older, but he's doing the same shit. Like pretty much. So yeah, it was always enjoyable to see them. Like and like um. I like the ticket taker guy, which is Alfredo was like, I guess, like mm-hmm. sort of partner in the theater. Like when he gets older, like um, that was enjoyable. Like again, he's popping up, like, "Hey, Toto, good to see you after thirty years." <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, and, and the way uh, one character that really came back at the end was the guy who bought the theater, uh, and to see him actually slightly broken about its de- uh, mm. a demolition. Yeah, like I said, like things, yeah, it was, some things it was, it was, change, uh, some things melancholy. Yeah, I I also wanted to mention uh, for. Slightly, I wish they had done more with this character. Mm-hmm. Now that we're on the subject, um, his sister mm-hmm. was—you only really get anything. True. She was barely about her at all in the beginning, and then she's just asleep every time you see her during his childhood. And uh, I think she was sickly. As a yeah, I think so too. I think but I, like I gathered that as, as well. But. I I I wondered, you know, what her deal was a little bit when I, when I was watching this movie, but. Uh, overall, the supporting characters are super strong in this, and I really loved uh, watching them create this town. Yeah, I wish I could remember the name of the town, but all the townsfolk of that town were quite well done. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a one. Okay. Steve, mm. dialogue. Dialogue. Dialogue was. Um, it wasn't like. It didn't pop. I want to say, but it was very strong, just natural dialogue. It was the things that this small Italian town would be saying to each other. And yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the dialogue a lot in this movie. Uh, there was just every conversation that happened was like felt full of like something other than what exactly that conversation was. It felt full of, like, history, right? Like, everybody kind of knows each other in a small town as, like, we're going through. And, like, you know, you have the the conversation that's happening, but you also have, like, all the history behind it. Somewhat of an and undercurrent. It felt like, yeah. yeah, it just felt like such a full world, and the dialogue really helped contribute to that. I, I enjoyed his 
chemistry with Elf- with Salvatore's chemistry with Alfredo, um, and you know all of the uh, hurt and anger that his mother was like holding in when she when he was younger, uh, kind of bubbled out in like her anger towards him, and then you'd see as that kind of subsided during his teenage years, she was much like kinder and uh more calm a bit more reserved and things like that so like there's all this stuff that comes out through dialogue that you kind of get when you think about it a little bit deeper and i really appreciate that about a movie and this movie does it really well yeah man i mean if nothing else like just all the conversations between alfredo and toto were pretty fantastic and yeah you're right like it's not like again we overuse this but you invented it so i'm just gonna throw it back in your face it's not sorkin-esque shit (laughs) ever but it's all very believable, and it's it's humorous when it needs to be. It's slapsticky here and there, but it's also serious and dramatic when it needs to be that. Well, I, here's so it's strange is that yeah, it has that element, but a lot of the secondary characters have comedic. Yeah. Di- They've like, got their uh, moment in the spotlight or yeah. two, even. <laughs> hey, what does the crawl say? I don't know. I can't read. Yeah, I'm illiterate too. <laughs> um, the the village idiot. Yeah. This this your special square? This is my square. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone needs to leave. This is my square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Little it, things like that. There's a lot of like nice moments in there of I would say great humor, but good humor. Yeah, and I and, and I laughed. Yeah, like nicely placed quite a bit through this. Yeah, exactly. And considering it's subtitles that I'm reading, mm. uh, so, uh, just a joke being presented to me, and I'm. Laughing at that, I think that's yeah. It's quality. it's a good. It's similar to um, we did the magician recently ish, and uh, similar to that. So it comes through in tone, but like a, it's also seemingly a good translation because of that. Because you you're not like removed from it, yeah. you can still read it and like you'll be in on the joke and, and laugh along. And then again, like I said, when there's more serious dramatic moments, you can also like be in the moment with that. Mm-hmm. So I'm giving it a one for it's sure. One. One. Okay, on to style with me. There's so much to say. Yeah, I don't know. Pick something and start off with it. <laughs> so much good to say that is all. How say. they weave the era of film that they're playing on the television with the era of reminiscing. It's almost a kind of... Like you can almost imagine that his memories of these events aren't 100% correct. It's almost like he's mm. melding it with the era that he's remembering in the, uh, in the film that he loved. So there's a thing where they're showing – I believe this is what you want to talk about. Um, one, uh, uh, Kurt uh, – uh, it's, it's, it's towards the end of the movie where everyone's on the boat, mm-hmm. uh, on the gondolas or whatever they are on the river, and uh, the storm hits. And uh, D- uh, Kirk uh, Douglas, I believe, is the yeah, uh, actor. I don't remember, yeah. and, but that scene – replicates what I imagine and he's like lying in the rain laughing like what I remember Kirk Douglas films like <laughs> right. being like uh, uh, dramatic and like the I thought it was Ben Hurther actually watching it I first, thought it was it at was, first yeah. I thought it was Spartacus it was, or something no I think it was um, Ulysses uh, was one for sure that show, but I don't remember the exact like film the, yeah. the Charlie Chaplin era they, I felt like the comedy that they were going for mm. was more uh, slapstick in that vein yeah um, so I don't know it, it, there's this it's not overdone it's incredibly a subtle touch to it but it's 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 beautiful. Yeah, it all it yeah. all matches and melds well. So I think there's another scene that you want to talk about. So I'll let you talk about that one. If it wasn't the boat scene, or if it was, let me know. Uh, well, there is one okay. that I want to talk about. Uh, yeah, I think you know what I want to talk about. But, but just like yeah, in general, man, I was very like even from the opening shot, the way it, like pans out um, to the like the countryside, and his mother is trying to get a hold of Toto to tell him that Alfredo has died, and then every shot like in the in the theater, especially for sure, like there are many like. Because he's in the projectionist booth, it's like through that mm-hmm. so you can you know, you sort of like peeking through like him checking on the movie and like that um, they have to adjust it when it's out of focus and so forth. But just like the lighting also was fucking amazing. Like I said, tied back in yeah. themes when they cut to like um, a statue of the Virgin Mary or whatever, and then it cuts like right back to them in the theater. So it's very nicely juxtaposed to that. And yeah, just like sort of the warm sunlight that pervades this town. It seems at least from what we not, just now that you mentioned it because of his memories. Yeah. Like, it might be, like, somewhat, like, you know, um, how should I say? It's not quite reality, but that's how he remembers it feeling like. Mm. So that was all very nice. So, yeah, so, other, like, it's cinematography is very impressive to me. I'm going to give it a one, and I'll let you talk about a scene or two that you would wish to. Yeah, the uh, so just to go off what you guys said, the cinematography, excellent. Uh, that boat scene, like, 
that that perfect timing of like her uh his you know his girlfriend showing up and like kissing him <laughs> like while he's laying back yeah. like that's it's a such a scene moment. out of like uh you know <laughs> exactly. out of a you know a romance from that era or something mm-hmm. um the one scene that i wanted to mention was the uh scene right before the cinema burns down it, uh so they are they have a they have a film showing and then it ends and everybody gets kicked out and they're all like about to mob the place to get, watch it again because what else do you have to do in this small town and uh he uh Alfredo turns to uh Toto and says shall we give them what they want and then puts a mirror in front of the uh projector and projects and like there's this slow pan yeah, it's of the fucking awesome it looks of so cool. the the screen like going across the wall and like small on the inside of the um of the, booth. the booth and it goes across and then finally it gets to the window and he just projects it up onto a up building across <laughs> the way yeah the, the guy it comes, comes out is like what the hell and it, and it goes back inside but like projects it up on a building across the way and it's just like this beautiful moment of this whole town like just stops and watches the movie and then they start clamoring because they can't hear any sound he's like well i guess we'll give that to them too and he like puts up a speaker and they start watching it and then at that you know, at the at the moment of like when you're happiest, of course, uh, he tells uh, Toto to go downstairs. Which, if Toto hadn't gone downstairs, maybe this all would have been avoided. But uh, Alfredo tells Toto to go downstairs and watch it. So he goes down uh, with the rest of the town. And while that's happening, the film starts to burn and starts a fire in the in the booth and almost kills Alfredo. Salvatore comes comes in and and rescues him. Uh, but that's like such a perfect scene that whole sequence was fucking great but there's also the priest is trying to get half price oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone. that's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. I, was I was like you yeah. forgot one thing he's trying that to sell tickets there's a level of levity with the greedy priest yeah. in there yeah. along with the uh, uh, benefactor uh, Alfredo oh yeah. so good so good and uh, as you mentioned a little bit earlier Ian the sound the the, the score is incredible mm-hmm. And I just wanted to mention uh, one other thing that I really noticed is the visual touchstone of the lion's head being the... I was um, going to mention that too. ...where yeah. you project, where they project through, uh, mm. was really cool, like, recurrent. They put that up in the new cinema when they rebuilt it after the fire. And, uh, you know, it's... And, and I, I believe as he's going through, yes. it's, yeah, it's, like, right. on the, the ground. The wreckage, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, a, it's, and it's, like... And it's, like, just that image of that, like, completely destroyed is, is heartbreaking. Like, so... It, the visual imagery of this movie is just so good, and that's like one of the big touchdowns of it. Yep, agreed. And one last thing: the final scene is. I'm going to reinforce this over and over again. One of the best final scenes of a movie I've seen in a very, very long time. It it's is quite top notch. Uh, Ian himself uh, said he watched it a number of times. Like just. Well, that I scene. love the music. Yeah. I love this. It's. It, it, it is really great, though, for so sure. Well. I don't know if it works in isolation of having never seen it before. Right. It might be impactful. But for everything it means for the movie, hmm, and true. now it means for me for the rest of my life. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, credit. So it's well, a all right. One. Yeah. All right, uh, Scott, recommendation. Uh, yes, I do, and like you said, so we're sort of venturing out into somewhat unfamiliar mm-hmm. waters well, with doing like foreign films or at least non-American films that I've been calling them. But yeah, this is like apparently like I knew of it, but I never, other than the fact that it existed and recognized the name, I wasn't familiar with it in any other way. And yeah, now having seen it, I definitely recommend it. It is one of the cooler films I've seen, and it's from I believe the year it was made in eighty eight or eighty nine. I believe something, yeah, something and, like that. So it's weird. It's got it's got release dates of eighty eight, eighty nine, and ninety various places. It might have been like internet. where it like premiered, like whatever country, like yeah. outside of Italy. It won best foreign yeah. film, yeah, and a number of other ones. Yeah. And so like they twenty other <laughs> like I reckon. I think it won best yeah, it won best foreign film Oscars and like cons and fucking yeah. uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So yeah, so like I definitely do recommend it. Um. Like I said, you might not be as familiar with it, but uh, I, it's worth a watch for sure because it is impactful, and you definitely can see its influence to a degree, even to this day, on on if not everything, on film, films in in certain angles, certain aspects. Mm. Like it's like one of you, like uh you one of you mentioned "Call Me by Your Name," and like yeah, I noticed that while I was watching it, and then I forgot about it, and then when you reminded me, I'm like, yep, that's right. I meant to very say that myself, yeah. but certainly I do recommend it. It is very well done film, very impressive, and still definitely stands. Yeah, it makes me want to uh, check out some more Italian cinema, see kind of what preempted this and and what came because of it. Uh, I think 
would be yeah. a really interesting. You know, we we've got life is beautiful and call me by your name, but that's two of probably a ton. I'm sure, of there are many more stuff. I think you know, uh, the Beyond Italian film came before this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably a direct descendant of that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, this is this is a great. It's a great film. I highly recommend watching it. It, it came highly recommended before mm -hmm. this. I've heard about it in a number of like you know a number of other places. Sure. Uh, I've been watching it. Random uh, shout out to the Good Place. I've been watching the Good Place, and at the end of the last season, they did a very obvious uh, like homage, or reference homage to it, to it yeah. and I didn't get it until I kind of heard someone else talk about it. And now that I've seen this, I'm like, oh wow, this is an homage to the final scene mm -hmm. in Cinema Paradiso. There you go, right, Cinema Paradiso. I did it myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's check it out. It's very good. It's one of the. It should be in the canon of like really great uh, cinema. As it is. And it is. <laughs> and, and yeah, it deserves its place. I guess I should have said yeah. that. <laughs> I love this film. Maybe it's my place in life right now, but it's up there with some of my favorite ones. I would rewatch this. I uh, probably, I might actually purchase this mm -hmm. uh, because it really did. It, I, I, I said, I watched Spark the ending. You. And I was, yeah, I love the idea of the entire arc that he goes through. This, I, I love old cinema as well yeah. uh, we have charlie chaplin right behind mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. uh i want to we should i'm gonna get a watch more, more of these now but <laughs> nonetheless i'm uh yeah i i fully fully give a 100 percent recommendation to this so yeah man uh, all right Absolutely. well scores nine mm -hmm. uh, nine overall we all give it nine for the same reason yep. uh well, i think that's damn yeah it's damn up there and and not for a fault of it. It just so happens yeah, on our just scale. the nature of the story. Yeah. It was yeah, again, like it was a default. It wasn't like a lacking or like again a failure on the part of it. Uh, uh, yeah, I, the the final scene music is playing through my head right now. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Ian Manser though, and here at Scatola and uh, Cinema Paradiso Bellissimo. <laughs> Stephen Rossi. Ciao. See you next time. Editing and engineering by Stephen Ramosi. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods? <laughs>